I'm from uh, North Philly. My mom had moved away and then she had sent for me to come, like, come back to her. And then we had moved to West Philly. Philly is a tough city. It's a, um, it's a rough city, it's a boxing city. When I was growing up, it was a huge drug scene. So all my cousins and family and friends around, around my neighborhoods was just like, Philly is Philly, you know? That's all I knew, so I don't really know. It's just Philly. Everybody know, though. I'm considered a latchkey kid. So my mom gave me my own key to the crib at like eight, nine, and was basically like, don't come back home until the, until the street lights come on. I grew up in a one bedroom apartment, so you know, we would just all be kicking it. And sometimes my mom would come home and she wouldn't even be tripping. She would just be drunk, like go right to her room. And it just, it was sweet though. Like I had to kick it house. So it was fun, it was fun. This is before I skated though too. So, so when I started skating, it was like, anybody could come to the crib, it was dope. I came from North Philly, so I came to West Philly. And I was like, you know, proving, trying to prove myself, whatever. So I like, damn near like, would get into fights with everybody around there. So by the time I wanted to like, yo, teach me how to skateboard, they like, nah. <laughs> like, like, nah, we're not teaching you. I'm like, whatever, like, ooh. So long story short, I had like a Bruce Lee skateboard, you know what I mean? And my man Terrence, he sold me the, the deck, and I just took the trucks off that and put it on the, the real board. So I was like, I got pro skateboard now, more. And I was like, yo, where, where y'all be skating at? They was like, nah. <laughs> they not wanted to bring me downtown for nothing, so I just like learned how to like push and stuff around my hood. Like, it was so bad skating in the hood that my mom, she from the hood. So when she was out and about, they used to tease her. So when they teased my mom about, oh, yes, I see your son out there skating on a goddamn skateboard, blah, 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 she would come home and get mad at me because they was all laughing at her. Man, it was, it was hard to be a black skater back in the day. Like, your hood would turn on you, kind of, if you couldn't, like, fight or, like, stand up for yourself. So at least we had that going for us. I just, I feel good to pioneer that in my hood because now when I do see people from my hood, both hoods, North Philly and, and West Philly, they like, yo, man, I remember you doing that and I do it for Philly, straight up. No matter where I live at, everybody in Philly know I do it for Philly just because when I was doing it, it was not to be done. I think skateboarding was hated on just for the simple fact that it was white and then the clothing and dressing all while. Cause I, I came from like fight the power, never trust a white man, like all of this like, you know, anti-white, anti-system, anti-social, like the whole like, you know, African-American kind of just suppression and just being a kid coming up in that uneducated and not having really a culture. At the right time at 10 years old in my life, skateboarding came into my life. So when I was in search of a culture, it, boom, stuck right to my back. And the more I learned about skating and traveling and other black pros and Asian pros and Puerto Rican, like Spanish and white, and it was like really no color boundary after a while. It was just all like uh, mental stability. That's what it really boiled down to. So at, um, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, for you to actually like stabilize your mind in a way where you you know a direction that you want to go into regardless of what anybody has to say, regardless of what race you are, is still a decision that, that we all chose to make, not just black kids, but white kids and Spanish kids. I mean, we all misfits as skaters, so I think we all stand up for that more than we do like our race. And that's what we, me and my homies had to let go from being black, you know, but it just fizzled out into creativity. So it was dope, and that's why I love skating. I used to dress like everybody, you feel me? We all dressed the same, but I was embarrassing my family. That's what people don't really know about me. Black people know that, but just from the hood, when I was wearing baggy clothes and big nudel jeans and heavy ass t-shirts and beanies and all of the crazy cool suburban stuff, I, I, I embarrassed my family. That's why, that's why I figured out, that's why my mom was getting mad. That's why my cousins wasn't really feeling it. That's why nobody really wanted to hang out with me and skate. And they all finally told me that when I was older. But it took my cousin to come down to Love Park and pull me to the side and say, yo, man, I, you doing your thing, man, you look good. You know, I don't know what the hell y'all doing out there, but you, you better than all of them niggas. I'm like, well, you know what I mean? He's like, yo, man, what's, what's up with you though, man? I'm like, what you mean? He's like, what's up with you? 
what the hell are you wearing? At this time, I had dreads, and I, I couldn't even, I don't even really know. I'm like, look, man, if you don't like me for who I am, then look, I don't care. This is, I'm good at this, I'm gonna do that. He's like, look, Steve, I know, man, but look, like, won't you get back to what we, how we used to, dog? And I'm like, I'm me, yo. This is what I am. I'm a good skater. He's like, yo, won't you come take a ride with me? So I'm like, all right, fuck it, I'm out. I'm about to go with my cousin. Cause my cousin, he, he my cousin, you feel me? So he go and take me out. And he like, yo, man, won't you go throw on some guest jeans, dog? Throw a polo joint on me. Won't you go get a chain with your, with your name on it? I'm like, nigga, nobody with no goddamn chain with my name on it, dog. This is before anybody had their initials. I'm talking, even, talking about even rappers. He was like, yo, go get a little medallion like with a skateboard or something. I'm like, nigga, hell no, I'm not doing that. He's like, all right, yeah, well, whatever. He's like, trust me though. And my cousin, he rapped, they sold drugs. They graffiti, D-boy Philly, you know what I mean? Younger version of my mom and her sisters and brothers or whatever. One day it clicked, you know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that, yo. I'm gonna try to skate in the guest jeans, the polo shirt, the fila shorts. I didn't have no sponsors. I was already the bad nigga Stevie nobody really wanted to fuck with. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna start filming in this. Cut my hair, got waves, start wearing regular clothes. And boom, so much shit changed. And, and right when I got on Chocolate and DC and I started blowing up and shit, I had money and stuff like that. He was like, I told you. And I'm like, yeah, dog, I'm moving to Cali. Woo. And I moved to Cali. And before I got a chance to even send him and my, my other homies out here, he died. That was uh, shocking to me because he ain't get a chance to see Stevie Williams, Joe. But my cousin, he created Stevie Williams. He told me to separate myself from everybody on some hood shit. And when I did, like the hood stood up for me, skateboarding, it was just different. Like, I ain't gonna say I changed cause I'm still Stevie that wore the dreads and the crazy Nudel jeans and skated with the homies. It's just that he helped me identify who I already was before I started skating. And that's from the hood. I think about my cousin all the time. And I know that somewhere down the line, like he helped me get this far in my career because, you know, if it wasn't for him, like kind of waking me up on some hood shit, being black, then I probably would be average. And he helped me really identify where I came from to be better to where I was going. And that's for the culture of both, for the hood and for, um, for skateboarding and shit too. And now it's global, you know what I mean? Now motherfuckers got clothing companies and it's, it's a good thing, you know, I, I feel blessed, straight up. I'm definitely not the first inner city skater dude, you know what I'm saying? It's just that the time that I did it and where skateboarding was at at that time, um, I was blessed, you know? I didn't let up off of it ever. But, you know, I, I can definitely admit that I wasn't the first dude that came from the inner city that tried to, you know, express where we all come from. It's just that, you know, time, it was the right time. To overcome anything, you just need to be aware of what's going on. That's, that's anything. And it's, it's kind of hard to, to tell somebody something because these motherfuckers don't listen. It's hard. It's just that. You just have to really know what you want to do and stand up for it, man. And just like how I was going to fight my cousin for what I believed in for skateboarding, it does take a little convincing for somebody else to inspire you, for you to inspire somebody else. So it's kind of like if you don't really have those kind of people around you, then you could kind of stay the same forever. And it just kind of thoughts of it. So to just like be about it, man, and just be serious and, and, and really put your passion into it and, and be aware enough to know that you can make a difference and it's not overnight, but if you're serious about it, then it, it could happen, man, you know? And, and if it don't happen, just know you tried, you know what I'm saying? That's just, that's just what it's about and just saying thank you and, and however I can give back to, to do more or to be more inspiring to the world it takes somebody in your corner to help you realize that. And that's everybody that I know. So I'm blessed, man. Skateboarding, my friends, my culture, both cultures and my race. I mean, I'm talking about race, color, whatever. And we all let all of that shit go to pick up skateboarding, to learn skateboarding. And, and I don't know about anybody else, but the feeling that I got from when I really learned how to skateboard, I didn't care about anything else. You feel me? 
So we are our own race, and that's who I stand up for, skateboarders. My time in skateboarding and, and my brothers and, and my colleagues and my peers, and it just really makes it a, a single race that we all stand up for for ourselves, no matter if our family, our best friend, or our mom is racist. Nine times out of ten, we're going to stand up for our homie because they don't understand what we know. They don't do what we do. They don't travel how we do. And we do what the fuck we want to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And what other, what other race would you want to be a part of that stands up as big as we do? Skateboarding has brought that into my life. It's hard to explain that to anybody else. You just, I just say, dog, you just got to be a skater. And that comes from a skater's mentality of thinking outside the box. Try, 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 try until you achieve, no matter what. And I don't think a lot of people is, is built for that. And I don't think that people even live their life like that. But when I talk to a skater, we all share the same mentality and the same growth. And, and I rock for that, yo. For sure. That's from skating.